Hello, Sigma. Today I am back with another very interesting problem and obviously a problem which you can experience in real life. In today's problem, what we have is a cube, a cube which has the side of L and what we need to do is we have to place this cube on this hemispherical bowl which has a radius of R such that the cube does not topple over. So you can easily make out that this is actually a problem of uh, stability. We have to find the condition for which the cube can be stably placed on top of the hemisphere. And I have already taught you how to do that in my previous video. So if you have not checked out that video, I'm going to put its link in the comments in the description and also in the recommended videos section right so do check that video out first the one which uh, has a relationship between force and potential energy and so forth and how you can find the condition for which the system will be in a stable equilibrium right we are searching for the equilibrium position so we know that uh, if we want to analyze the stability of that cube what we would want to find is the potential energy of that cube because that is exactly how we analyze the stability of any body right we find its potential energy and the derivative of potential energy we put it equal to zero and that gives us the condition for which uh, this uh, cube will be can be stably placed uh, on top of the hemispherical bowl but the first derivative just gives you the equilibrium condition it does not tell you whether the equilibrium is stable or unstable for that what we need to do is find out the second derivative and it has to be positive that is exactly what we are going to do in today's problem the same thing that we had done for the case of the teacher toy right this is something which I had taught you on my video on teacher toy so if you have not watched that video on teacher toy do check it out otherwise you are going to have no clue about what I'm doing in this video. So over here we need to find the potential energy of the cube and to find the potential energy of the cube what we actually have to do is find the potential energy of the center of mass of the cube. So where is the center of mass of this cube going to be located? Let us find that out first. So let us say as this uh, cube, you can see that it, is, it has toppled over, right? This cube uh, initially must have uh, looked uh, something like uh, this. So initially the cube must have been like this. And then this cube uh, must have toppled over. That really does not matter. What we have to find is the uh, position for which the cube can be stably placed on top of the hemispherical bowl. Okay, so if the cube has toppled over, just imagine it. It will displace this, this point of contact over here that let, let me draw it in a thing. This point of contact is not exactly the center of the base. Just imagine it won't be touching the center. The center will be a little to the left right the center will be somewhere over here and the point of contact is here and if that is the case then this will make if the center is over here let's say this is the center of mass of the cube then uh, this you can see is forming a rectangle right a rectangle which looks like that so if let's say the center of the base is a whereas the point of contact is b then this cd over here cd or uh, we mostly represent the center with O. So let me call it O and this as O prime. So this uh, O prime have to be equal to AB because as I said, it is the rectangle which it is forming over there, the rectangle which I have drawn in pink. And uh, the center of mass is, let's say at a distance of uh, this much, right? From the ground, right? It is, uh, let's say at a distance H from the ground and uh, while this uh, cube was uh, rotating let us say it has rotated by an amount theta right let us say that uh, this thing over here is the radius of the 
bowl right r and uh, this uh, cube initially it was present over here initially the point of contact was this right that i'm drawing in pink but then the cube uh, while it was toppling over it got rotated right it got rotated by an amount theta so if its center of the base was touching uh, the hemispherical bowl initially and now it has rotated about uh, by an angle theta then that would mean that uh, ab is actually equal to r theta and so is o, o prime right just think about it once initially its center of the base was touching uh, the hemisphere right initially the center of the base of the cube was touching the hemisphere but then it rotated while it was toppling over and now the point of contact is b so ab has to be equal to r theta this is the uh, this problem is really a problem of geometry and uh, these type of problems in physics which involve a lot of geometry actually also require a lot of imagination so your imagination has to be really good you have to spend some time thinking about what's going on in this problem uh, to really understand what it is but at the end of the day you will have to imagine it yourself so as this cube was a uh, toppling over the center of the base is not touching the hemisphere anymore that is another point b is that touching the base of the hemisphere right this was initially the center a and now another point b is touching the hemisphere and so that point uh, or the distance uh, ab has to be given by r theta right that is how rotation works let us say that this component of o prime over here right uh, let me call this point as c so the distance oc if i uh, draw it uh, a little bit bigger i am just exaggerating the triangle right let me draw this triangle with a purple color so this triangle let me draw a exaggerated version of the triangle so this is the triangle so this is the triangle o o prime and uh, c okay so you can see that it is a right angle triangle and hence uh, if it is a right angle triangle then uh, this angle is obviously theta if you look at the geometry carefully you can see that that angle will be theta and hence this oc is going to be nothing but o o prime sin theta and we already know what o o prime is it is r theta sin theta okay so we have found that distance uh, oc now we have to find the rest of the h so what it is uh, going to be so if i call uh, this point as uh, let's say d right the point at which the arrow is touching the ground if i call it a d then you can see that this distance over here uh, let me draw it in purple so this distance that is the distance so let me call this uh, point as s so s o prime i'm speaking of s o prime so you can see that s o prime is actually equal to r the radius of the hemisphere plus l by 2 which has to be that right because what i'm taking the distance is uh, from the center of the hemisphere to the center of the cube and that distance is r plus l by 2 okay and hence if you take the rest of the h right if you want to find the rest of the h it is going to be this distance from here to here and that as you can see is nothing but uh, so prime right so prime if that this this angle is theta then this angle is also theta right so they are uh, known as alternate angles so if that angle is theta then uh, that length is uh, simply going to be so prime cos theta okay so you can easily see that od which is equal to h is actually equal to that is h is the distance of the center of mass of the cube uh, from the ground which is the required to find potential energy uh, right while the cube is toppling over so that h is as you can see oc plus oc plus cd and cd is nothing but uh, o prime d right cd and o prime d are the same so i have oc plus o prime d okay and o prime d is nothing but so uh, cos theta so i'm just going to substitute this uh, substitute the values so here you can see that oc is equal to r theta sin theta 
plus O prime D is the SO cos theta, this SO cos theta, and SO is R plus L by 2. Hence, I am going to get R plus L by 2 cos theta. This has given us H, which is the distance of the center of mass of the cube from the ground while it is toppling over. And now what we need to do is we have to find the theta for which the cube can be stably held on top of the hemisphere. So to do that, uh, what we need to do first is find the potential energy. And potential energy here is, as you can see, a function of theta is equal to mgh. And we have uh, found h already. So we are going to substitute that h. So this is just going to be mg r theta sine theta plus r plus l by 2 cos theta. So here we have found the expression for potential energy of that cube. And once we know the potential energy, now finding the stability condition or finding the equilibrium point is no big deal. All what we have to do is differentiate V with respect to theta and then put it equal to zero. That is going to give us the uh, theta for which the cube is going to be stably held on top of the hemisphere. So if we do that, you can see that if I differentiate V with respect to theta, what I'll be getting is that R and R sine theta, first I'll differentiate theta plus R theta cos theta because differentiation of sine theta is cos theta plus R plus L by 2 into minus of sine theta. Okay, so this is going to have a minus sine and a sine theta because cos theta derivative is minus of sine theta and that is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so if I open these uh, bracket, I will get a minus r sine theta which is going to get cancelled with this r sine theta. So I'll be left with r theta cos theta minus L by 2 sine theta equal to zero. And hence, uh, what I'm going to get is the tan theta is equal to uh, and uh, a 2 r you get. So 2 r upon L theta. Okay. So can you tell me a situation for which this uh, can be true? This condition requires that theta is equal to C. Like you can try it for various theta. You will find that this condition does require theta equal to zero. Right? Uh, for all other situations, the tan theta can never be equal to uh, 2R upon LC. R and L are decided by us. Okay. Uh, so for uh, only for theta equal to zero, we get a theta equal to zero, we get tan theta also equal to zero. And hence this condition is satisfied or uh, this situation is satisfied only for theta equal to zero. Okay, so we are going to get theta equal to zero as our equilibrium position, which is no great surprise, right? It is obvious that if you place the cube on top of the hemisphere, then it is going to be stable, right? With its uh, center of the base uh, touching the hemisphere. And if it is uh, turning, if the cube is uh, turning like that, then obviously it is, you can never put it uh, uh, stably on top of the hemisphere, right? You can never have a turned cube like the situation which I have shown in this diagram. You can never have this situation and uh, the cube being stable on top of the hemisphere. It is obviously going to topple over. The cube will only be stably kept on top of the hemisphere when uh, it is kept on top, exactly on top of the hemisphere with, it, with the base with the center of its base uh, touching the top of the hemisphere. That is the situation which I have drawn here in dotted lines, right? Here it might not look like you that uh, the center of the cube is touching. That is simply because of my bad uh, drawing. But uh, the center of the cube, this A is nothing but the center of the cube, which is uh, touching the hemisphere. And that is what gives us the equilibrium condition. That is theta equal to zero. So this was no great surprise. Uh, you, if when if you simply apply your common sense, you will be convinced that uh, this has to be the condition for equilibrium. There is no real physics in this, right? That is just common sense. But 
this is what we physics people do we want to prove something that might seem obvious or through common sense mathematically that gives us a different kind of pleasure you know so moving forward we have found the condition for equilibrium or we have found the equilibrium point but we have not found what uh, the relationship between r and l should be so that this equilibrium is stable that is we have found the equilibrium condition right this is nothing but the equilibrium condition but we do not know whether the equilibrium is stable or not we have to find the condition for a stable equilibrium right and for a stable equilibrium okay so we have to find the condition for stable equilibrium right for stable equilibrium the condition is that the second derivative of the potential energy with respect to theta at the equilibrium position at theta equal to zero should be zero if you do not know how i am getting this then probably you have not watched the video on the teacher toy so do check that out uh, to know exactly how we get this okay so let us uh, quickly take the second derivative of the potential energy with respect to theta right we have already taken the first derivative and now we will take another derivative of that right first derivative here we have already taken over here right this is the first derivative and now i am going to redifferentiate it so i will get a uh, r cos theta and then uh, i will get a minus r sin theta or minus r theta sin theta right plus i will get r cos theta if i differentiate the theta so plus r cos theta and then uh, i will get that sin theta will become cos theta so i will get minus r plus l by 2 sin cos theta Right, there was a sine theta, so it will become cos theta, and we need the condition for stable equilibrium. So actually, this will not be equal to zero, but this will actually be greater than or equal to zero. Or equal to zero, we have already considered. So it has to be strictly greater than zero. Right, this at theta equal to zero has to be strictly greater than zero. That is going to give us the condition for a stable equilibrium. Okay, so if I just put theta equal to zero over there, I will be left with R. All the sine theta terms are obviously going to disappear. I'll be left with only cos theta terms. Oh, this R cos theta and this one, no, it's, they are not getting cancelled. They, they just becomes two R cos theta and cos theta cos of zero is uh, one. So I will be left with a two R minus R plus L by two. Cos theta L is again one. Is uh, greater than zero. Okay, so I'll be left with uh, r plus l by two, or r minus because uh, there is a minus sign over here, so it is going to combine with the plus sign, and I'm going to get a minus. So I will be left with r minus l by two has to be greater than zero, and that gives us the final result, the stability condition that two r has to be greater than l, or r has to be greater than L by two. Okay, so that is exactly what we were chasing in this uh, video. We wanted to find a relationship between the radius of the hemisphere and the cube. That is, we wanted to find the dimensions of the cube such that it can be stably placed on top of the hemisphere. And this gives us just that. It tells us that the length of the cube has to be uh, less than the diameter of the hemisphere otherwise the cube can never be stably placed on top of the hemisphere if we have a cube whose length is greater than the diameter of the hemisphere then we will never be able to stably keep the cube on top of the hemisphere and that is just amazing you know so physics can tell you under what conditions uh, you can balance things on top of one another you can never balance a cube on a hemisphere if its length is greater than its diameter right that is that is pretty mind blowing
So these magicians, uh, while they are performing some stunts, so in which uh, they are balancing things on top of one another, they know this physics. You know, you don't, and that's why you might not be able to balance a cube on top of a hemisphere, but they can. So that was all about uh, this uh, very very interesting problem of uh, stability at equilibrium. If you want me to make more such interesting videos on such real life problems, then do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.